Hi, and welcome to Mr. Edwards' GCSE PE Revision Sessions. These videos give you the option to pause, freeze, and rewind the lessons at your own pace. Within this video, we're going to look at the classification and the characteristics of muscle types, locations, and the role of voluntary muscle systems and antagonistic pairs of muscles. By the end of this video, you should be able to identify the classifications and the characteristics of muscle types, the location and the role of the voluntary muscles. You should be able to explain antagonistic pairs in relation to sporting activities and you should be able to apply your knowledge of the classification and characteristics of muscle types, voluntary muscles and antagonistic pairs to a range of tasks. Muscle types and physical activity. There are three types of muscles in the body. Cardiac muscle, involuntary muscles and voluntary muscles. All muscles are made of fibres. It is the way these fibres work which differentiate one type of muscle from another and make each type able to perform a specialist role. Three categories of muscle are voluntary, involuntary and cardiac. Voluntary muscles, the muscles involved in the skeletal movement. Involuntary muscles, the muscles involved in digestive and vascular shunting. And cardiac muscles, the muscles of the heart which pump blood around the body. Key term, cardiac muscle the muscle of the heart which pumps blood around the body. Where are these found? Cardiac muscle is found exclusively in the heart. This type of muscle is not under any conscious control and it contracts and relaxes continuously throughout our lives. Cardiac muscles provide the pumping action that circulate blood around the body and delivery of oxygenated blood and the removal of carbon dioxide are the major roles of cardiac muscle when it comes to sports and activity. The beating of the heart or heart rate and the strength in which it contracts stroke volume alter in response to the intensity of the activity. When swimming, cardiac muscle is responsible for the heart pumping action which delivers oxygen and nutrients in the blood to the working muscles. Involuntary muscles. Involuntary muscle is located in the middle layer of blood vessels and throughout the digestive system. It has many roles including digesting food and expelling waste from the body. Crucial to sport and physical activity is a process known as vascular shunting. This is where blood is directed away from the digestive system and directed towards the voluntary muscles used for, mus for movement. Here you can see involuntary muscles. In this sporting example, vascular shunting is happening. The blood is moving away from the player's digestive system, which allows more blood to be pumped towards the voluntary muscles, for example, bicep, tricep, to allow for the drop shot to occur in this movement. During badminton, involuntary muscles is responsible for vascular shunting, which allows oxygenated blood to be directed towards working muscles. Voluntary muscles. Voluntary muscles attach to your bones via tendons. These muscles are under conscious control. You can decide when and how powerful you contract them. Voluntary muscles are crucial to creating movement. Therefore, voluntary muscles are crucial in all sports and physical activity movements. Here's a sporting example. When playing football, 13 muscles are crucial in allowing a person to move. Running is a movement that requires many voluntary muscles working at the same time. Voluntary muscles and their role in physical activity. Movement is produced when voluntary muscles attach to the bone by tendons contract and the skeletal and muscular systems work together to produce movement. Sporting movements are examples of the works of what the muscular skeletal system do. A contracting voluntary muscle pulls a bone which alters the angle at the joint and a movement is produced. Key terms. Contraction, a muscle contracts when it is active and tension is created. This is when the muscle shortens. Muscular skeletal system, the name given to the combined body system that involves your muscles and your skeleton. Voluntary muscles and their role in physical activity. Voluntary muscles you need to know. The deltoid, the bicep, the pectorius major, hip flexor, quadricep, tibialis anterior, 
gastrocnemius, hamstring, gluteus maximus, external obliques, and latissimus dorsi. Finally, the tricep. Antagonistic pairs. Because muscles can only pull and are not capable of pushing, they are arranged in a pair on either side of the joint. Movement is produced when one muscle contracts and pulls on a bone while the opposite muscle relaxes and allows the bone to be pulled. A pair of muscles is called an antagonistic pair. The muscles contracting is known as the agonist, while as the opposite muscle, which is relaxing, is known as the antagonist. Key terms. Antagonistic muscle pair. A pair of muscles that work together to produce movement. Agonist. The muscle within the pair that, at a time, contracts to pull on the bone and produce movement. Antagonist. The muscle within the pair that, at a given time, is relaxing to allow movement to occur. Sporting example. A bicep curl. As the performer pulls the weight towards their face, causing flexion within the elbow joint, the antagonist is the bicep which is contracting. The antagonist is the tricep that relaxes. So as the, muscle, as the movement comes up, the muscles contract, so the bicep contracts, the re tricep relaxes, allowing for the flexion to occur at the elbow, and on the opposite phase, so the extension of the elbow, the muscles switch round, so the tricep becomes the agonist and the bicep becomes the antagonist. Obvious antagonistic pairs. The following muscles make up obvious antagonistic pairs. During sports situation, antagonistic pairs swap roles continuously. A muscle acts as both an agonist and an antagonist depending on the movement required. Some obvious ones are the biceps, the triceps, which act at the elbow to create flexion and extension. The hip flexor and the gluteus maximus, acting at the hip to create flexion and extension. The hamstring and the quadricep, acting at the knee to create flexion and extension. And the tibius anterior and the gastrocnemius, acting at the ankle to create dorsi flexion and plantar flexion. Thank you for listening to Mr. Edwards' GCSE PE revision videos. If you have any questions, feel free to email me on damianedwards at kingselbarsha.com. Cheers. Bye.